Hi everyone, it's Henry here, and in today's video we're going to take a look at how I'd paint the Hobcrot Slitters from the new Age of Sigmar Dominion box set. As someone who's been into Warhammer Fantasy since 3rd edition? 4th edition? Whichever one it was with the really spiky goblin spearmen in, I was really excited to see the return of the Hobgoblins uh, in this guise as the Hobgrot Slitters. And I've got a confession, I may well have fallen in love with these models. So you might have to indulge me a tiny bit in this video where I maybe spend a touch too much time on what should really be an army painting paint job. But I'll try and explain that during the tutorial, perhaps what steps you could leave out to speed it up and you wouldn't really lose too much of an effect. Now let's paint these horrible gits. Over a black undercoat, I'm gonna base coat the model in a dark purple color. Now I'm using scale 75 black leather it can be a bit tricky through the airbrush sometimes, these scale paints. I've thinned it with life colour thinner, four or five drops of thinner to paint, and I'm spraying at 25 psi. Just a few coats to get a nice solid colour. I want purple to be the more or less the universal shadow colour for the model, and potentially for an army project. So dark purple is what we're looking for. Mix up your own by all means, really doesn't matter uh, what particular paint you use for this, it's just the colour that we're after. And over the top of this, we're going to effectively zenith or highlight, so all the upward facing edges, really just leaving the shadows purple. So we're gonna highlight using Ammo by MIG Olive Drab Dark. The Ammo by MIG paints for the airbrush are incredible. Um, they're the only paints I, I just don't thin. You just don't need to. They're the, the first truly sort of airbrush ready paints I've used, or certainly at the pressure and the way I airbrush, they're ready to use. So again, 25 PSI, 0.4 needle nozzle using the Harder and Steenbeck Cold Paint Infinity. There you can see most of them is a dark green. You could possibly skip this step if you wanted to, to speed it up a touch, but I like doing it. Then for our highlight, I'm gonna use Ammo by MIG again, and this time it's Dunkelgelb Light Base. I really liked the heavy metal team's take on the new Hobgrots with that yellow skin tone, but one, I don't have that new paint, so I can't tell you what it's like and, and what it's like to use. Uh, and two, I think it's kind of fun to try and look at slightly different ways of representing these models. Um, you know, if you want to see how the heavy metal guys do or GW way, I'm sure they've got great tutorials on that anyway. So for me, I wanted to go for a slightly yellow green, but as I said, a slightly different take on it. And here you can see I'm really focusing on, again, hitting the upward facing parts of the muscles, and just really lightening it up. So once that's dry, I'm going to apply a couple of coats of diluted Nasdreg Yellow Contrast Paint. So I've just diluted this with my normal airbrush thinner. And I've probably diluted it at least three drops of thinner to paint, if not four drops of thinner to paint. And I'm going to let each layer dry before I apply the next one. The reason I'm airbrushing the skin, it makes sense to me. The flesh on these models, particularly I've chosen to build them without the helmets where possible, is the predominant part of the model. So that's the area that people are gonna focus on. It's the area that I need to get painted across the army. If it was just painting faces, I'd be doing it with a brush. But when it's over such a large area, I think the airbrush makes a lot of sense. So you can see once that third coat's dried, we've got a real yellow finish. Now I don't like my models to look overly airbrushed. And one of the other things I wanted to do was just add a little bit of difference. Um, my friend Rich Marlowe's painted this great old Trogoth that's got different colored hands and feet um, to the rest of the flesh on him. And I really like the effect. And I thought, I wonder if I can do something like this on these uh, grots. And I've used the amazingly uh, named Medium Green, again by Ammo by MIG. And I'm just glazing. So building up the layers using thin layers of paint, the hands, the feet, I'm gonna do the nose, I'm gonna do the ears as well with this sort of blue green color. It's going to take three or four layers to build it up. But you see, I'm always moving my brush towards the area I want the stronger concentration of paint, so the, the extremities of the model. And what we end up with is a nice blend. Now, of course, you could do this using an airbrush, but again, I don't, you know, I like to see brushwork on a model. I don't just want to see techniques when I'm painting my models. It's what I enjoy. Now, we switched over here. Um, it's not an amazing paint job. I haven't managed to paint a horn on or anything. Um, the footage wasn't quite up to scratch, I felt, on that other model, so I've repainted another one. Um, I think we can see what I'm doing a lot better on this. 
just the areas where we've got that blue green blending in i'm just going to start painting a couple of little dots as well so i guess a little bit like liver spots or whatever just to add a little bit of interest When we're airbrushing shadows in, we tend to get quite broad highlights and quite broad shadows. What I want to go into here is just go and use my brush, thinned out black leather, so the same colour we put the shadows in earlier, and just try and define those muscles a little bit more, the shapes of them. Make sure we've got that nice colour in the shadows, but also create an additional tone in between the sort of base colour green and the shadows. Now, except this may be quite a few processes for what's ostensibly a chaff unit, but I'm absolutely in love with these models. Um, I'm really enjoying painting them. And you're only taking them in tens, so it's fine. You've got you've got time to do it. Um, I anticipate you can get a unit of ten of these done in two or three hobby sessions, no problem. And with that same black leather colour, I'm going to go over. They've got a lot of scars on them, these miniatures, presumably where the Chaos Dwarves have been uh, whipping them. But uh, I'm going to go over those scars with the black leather, just to sort of pink them up a bit. And I'll paint this bottom lip in, in this colour as well. I've always liked that on green skins. I wanted to paint these uh, Hobgrots slightly differently to how I would paint the rest of the Cruel Boys. The sort of looking at the fact that they don't live in the swamp, these ones, you know, they are the sort of go-betweens. Uh, and I always liked the idea that the Chaos Dwarves and the Hob Hobgoblins and the old Whammer Fantasy were a bit more... Uh, I can't think how to describe it. They, the, the lands they inhabited were very different to the sort of classic Germanic setting we had in the old world. So I wanted to just make these look a touch more maybe exotic, maybe the right word, than the rest of the Cruel Boys would be. So perhaps a little bit more colourful um, than the others would be. Now I'm going to gloss varnish the whole model using polyurethane gloss. Get ready for the last step, more or less, on the skin. So I'm going to use Payne's Grey oil paint, just like I did on the Stormcast in the other tutorial recently. Mix this up into a wash. I've thinned it down using odorless mineral spirits. I've used Sandstore by Windsor & Newton. We just want to make sure that the paint is thoroughly mixed into the wash so that when we apply it, we don't get little, uh, little particles of it floating around too much. Then because we've got a nice high gloss on the model, we can just liberally wash the entire miniature and that capillary action, so the solvent base of the oils and the high gloss surface of the model means most of that paint's gonna get sucked into all the recesses, just give us a really nice bit of extra definition uh, over the, the whole model. And if you do get any of it on certain areas that perhaps you don't want shaded, just wipe it off with a clean brush. But as you can see, it doesn't really stay on those surfaces. It tends to run into those recesses. Now I like to leave my oils to dry overnight. And I'm just gonna add a couple of little highlights here. So I've mixed in a little pale blue-gray, um, Vallejo model color, pale blue-gray, any off-white will do, into the medium green. Just going to highlight that blue green. So I gave the whole model a coat of satin varnish and I've blacked out the rest of the details on there. I went for satin rather than matte because I quite like the idea that their skin's got a little bit of a, a sheen to it. Now the rest of the model is nice and simple. Again, this is army painting, so I've chosen to spend a lot of time on the skin. And for me, that means I need to treat the other areas of the model with care and attention, but we can't be spending ages on them. Otherwise, we'll just never get a unit done. So I'm going to base coat all these little rope parts in my current favourite paint, Barracknar Burgundy. Again, trying to stay in that sort of green, blue, purple colour palette. And when I get onto painting the Cruel Boys, we will uh, we'll look at that as well. We'll look at keeping that palette fairly consistent. I've added a little bit of the pale blue grey into the Barracknar Burgundy, just for some little highlights on the rope parts. I've got to say building these models was a, a, a real pleasure not just because I really like them but they um they're very very well engineered the way they go together is really clever there's there's very few gaps um to be filling at all and there's loads of, de of sort of clearly defined pieces um and, and the ropes are a good example of that then for the sort of uh woven or twisted uh, wooden um 
don't really know, straps, I guess, on the model. Uh, I'm just going to base coat those using a brown. So I've used Rhinox Hide. I'm using a Rhinox Hide and another GW paint to highlight in a second because I like the finish of it. I'm not going to varnish the model anymore after this, but I quite like that satin finish that a lot of the GW paints have. Again, it's just trying to just trying to play up that slightly, I guess, wet feeling of, of them all living in the swamps. But you see, once we get those other colours on the model, the skin really does sort of jump out a lot more. And I'm highlighting it using GW Morn Frang Brown. So we've used quite cool colours so far, lots of blues, and now I'm just using some slightly warmer tones with this brown. So it's a little bit of extra contrast, which never hurts um, when you've got a gaming miniature. You know, contrast is what's going to help it show up on the table. But we're nearly there with this guy now. So you see, it comes together very quickly once we've done that skin. For the metal parts, I'm going to base coat them using Vallejo Metal Color Steel. Uh, I say this a lot, I, I use this paint a lot. You need to mix it, you shake it very thoroughly and use it on a normal plastic palette, not a wet palette, because it does separate out very quickly. But it flows so nicely off your brush that it makes painting these sort of slightly busy metal pieces like the grenade and stuff very, very easy because it just flows into all of the, uh, the recesses nicely. Over the top of this silver colour, I'm going to use a wash of two contrast paint, well, one contrast paint and a wash. So I'm using two drops of Agrax Earthshade to one drop of Griff Hound Orange. And then I've thinned that down slightly with a little bit of water. And I'm just going to wash that over all the silver parts. And it will just tarnish them, it will give them a little bit of corrosion. A nice again that sort of that warm colour just playing off against the cooler skin. And then for the bronzy, brassy, coppery bits, so the studs they've got on them and his horn, I'm going to base coat them using Scale 75 Victorian Brass. Yeah, it really was a pleasure to paint this model. It's got lots of for such a tiny model. It's got lots of nice different things to paint on it. And then over those coppery parts, again I'm going to use a, a wash contrast mix. This time it's two drops of Agrax to one drop of Pterodon Turquoise. Thin down. I didn't thin it down, I splodged it right on on there and I was like, oh goodness. Uh, clean my brush off, it's just got water on now. We'll just move that paint around on the model. Because it's got some of that contrast paint in there, it gives you a slightly longer working time. It doesn't immediately sort of stain like a just a normal wash would. So we can just move it around and get it where we want it. And there he is. Now all I've done, it's a lot easier to sort of explain it when we look at him here than, than try and zoom in and, and film the teeny tiny details. I put a little bit of red on his eyeballs because green skins have got our red eyes, they're bad guys. Uh, I just used, what did I use for that? Evil Sun Scarlet. A little bit on the end of your brush, just pop it in there. Then for the brass parts, I then applied a wash of uh, Abtalung 502 Turquoise Lights. Uh, if you want to know a little bit more about doing that sort of oxidized copper effect, um, check out the Verdigris video uh, for some different ways of doing it. But I really liked that. Um, really sort of in your face turquoise for this model. The only other thing I've done is when the washes had dried on the metal parts, I took a lighter silver and just tapped a few of the little edges on the silver parts. And I took my Victorian brass and tapped a few of the little edges on the coppery brass parts as well. Uh, the marsh bases, I will be doing a separate video for that, ordering a few more bits in and just, just tweaking it so we can make a fun tutorial out of it. But I absolutely adored painting this model. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed sort of watching and listening to me possibly gush about it a little bit. Um, but that's what miniatures painting is about, right? It's uh, Sometimes it's just fun. Um, and this model really was a lot of fun. And I do have a whole unit sat behind me on the desk 
Uh, I've got all the skin done on them. And again, that's how I'd approach this uh, in blocks. So if I was painting them in 10, I'd get all the skin up to the oil wash stage in one hobby session in the evening. Wouldn't be a problem at all. Then I'd leave that. And by the time I came back to the next session, then I could block in all the rest of the colors. Again, finishing off with the washes. And then the final session, I could do the basing. And I could just go back and pick out some of the little metal metallic parts. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, let me know in the comments. Hit the like button and if you're not already, subscribe because it really, really helps us out. And if you hit that little notifications bell, you won't miss out on any more of the AOS Dominion stuff we've got coming up over the next couple of weeks. Thanks ever so much for watching and I'll see you next time.